Today on Earth Focus, chemical dumping and childhood cancer. In his new book, Dan Fagan retells the tragedy of Tom's River and the lessons learned. Coming up on Earth Focus. In the 1950s, Tom's River was like any small town in America. Located on the New Jersey shore, residents thought it was an ideal place to raise children. But when large chemical companies turned the town into their own private dumping ground, consequences were deadly. In the United States and even around the world, there are a number of places that have gotten a lot of attention for having what appear to be an unusual number of cancer clusters. Toms River is one of those places, and it's an important one. The big thing that happened in Toms River that's, that's germane to this story is that illegal dumpers started coming down to central and southern New Jersey, where there was lots of open space and not a lot of people watching carrying trucks with uh, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of barrels of hazardous waste that they didn't want to dispose of legally because it was too expensive. There was one very fateful illegal dumping incident that occurred in the uh, early 1970s in the back two acres of a chicken farm. This trucker took several thousand rusting barrels of hazardous waste from Union Carbide in the North Jersey. And he just started digging trenches in the back of this chicken farm and dumping these barrels, many of which were already coming apart. And Union Carbide did not take a lot of interest in what this guy was doing. They were happy to be rid of their barrels. So ultimately, that became a huge contamination problem for the town. Another source of contamination was Seba Geige's chemical dye plant, built in 1952. Solid and liquid waste from the manufacturing process were disposed of on 20 sites on the plant's property. And between 1952 and 1966, chemical waste was dumped directly into Tom's River. In both cases, in the case of this illegal dump site, and also in the case of the chemical plant, a huge amount of that waste wound up going into the ground, into groundwater, or into surface water, the Tom's River. And both of those became very problematic because Tom's River, like many places in the, in the Northeast, gets its drinking water from shallow wells. And those wells became very badly contaminated. Yes, this is very much a story of how corporations behave like corporations. Ultimately, the biggest excesses in Tom's River appeared to be in childhood cancer, specifically leukemia and brain cancers, essentially, or cancers of the, of the central nervous system. Exactly how many kids died as a result of that, the simplest way to explain it would be to say that about 69 families, 69 children and their parents were part of the legal settlement, and they are usually considered the cluster. Personally, I think that's pretty inadequate, and, and the actual numbers were surely much larger. It's very easy to lose sight of the human cost. I guess that's one of my goals, too, in writing this book, is I want to explain the science and I want to explain the law, but I also want to tell the stories of these people, uh, of, the, of the people who are directly involved. These are living, breathing families. Some of them are not breathing anymore. Ultimately, things got better in Tom's River. Citizens, mostly in the community, but also some outside of the community, spoke up and said, don't tell me to shut up. This doesn't look right to me. I want to know what's really going on. And those obstacles were overcome only because democracy ultimately worked. Legal negotiations between the families and C.B. Geige and Union Carbide and the water company, that process ended in a settlement in 2001 but it was a very slow process, so slow that there were, there were truly tragic consequences. I think the real responsibility goes to government, to the regulatory agencies, which really did not do their job in Tom's River for a very long time. 
what really went wrong in Tom's River is that not enough public officials said, you know, we need to go beyond the letter of the law here and we need to figure out what's really going on and we need to figure out how to protect public health. And that didn't happen enough. Good things happened in Tom's River when people started to get involved in their community. And I think that's a profound lesson for every community. What we need is an engaged, fully informed citizenry. And that's what Tom's River ultimately got. It's just a terrible tragedy that it didn't come sooner. Crucial to preventing the next Tom's River, we need to be aggressive about identifying potential tragedies before they become tragedies. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.